Welcome to the fourth episode of Unveiling the Darkness, Luis Garavito. Please subscribe, share, and like our channel Thread Tonic and help us grow. Luis Alfredo Garavito Cubillos, notoriously known as the Monster of the Andes, casts a sinister shadow over Colombia, leaving behind a trail of devastation and despair that scars the nation's history. Born into poverty and violence on January 25, 1957, in the rural town of Genova, Garavito's early years were steeped in hardship and adversity. His family, much like countless others in Colombia at the time, struggled to make ends meet, inhabiting a small, dilapidated home on the town's outskirts. His father, Manuel Antonio Garavito, toiled as a laborer, earning meager wages that barely sustained the family, while his mother, Ana Julia Cubillos Torres, grappled with the challenge of caring for Luis and his six siblings. Garavito's formative years were marked by deprivation and neglect, characterized by meager resources and minimal parental oversight. Growing up amidst a backdrop of prevalent violence and political instability in Colombia, Garavito and his siblings often found themselves fending for survival, left to roam the streets of Genova without guidance or protection. The poverty that enveloped Garavito's childhood left an indelible imprint on his psyche, shaping his worldview and igniting a deep-seated sense of resentment and bitterness. He bore witness to the stark disparities in wealth and opportunity that plagued Colombian society, where the divide between affluence and poverty was glaring and unforgiving. This pervasive sense of injustice festered within Garavito, breeding feelings of anger and resentment toward those he perceived as privileged or fortunate. As Garavito traversed the turbulent waters of adolescence, he found himself increasingly drawn to acts of cruelty and violence as a means of asserting control over his tumultuous surroundings. His interactions with peers and authority figures were marked by defiance and hostility as he grappled with his place in a world seemingly determined to thwart his aspirations. Consequently, his academic performance suffered, with Garavito frequently absconding from school and entangling himself in skirmishes with law enforcement. The adolescence of Garavito was a period rife with rebellion and defiance against the backdrop of Colombia's tumultuous social landscape. Residing on the impoverished fringes of Genova, he encountered a daily struggle for survival amidst the chaos of political instability and economic destitution gripping the nation. His family, burdened by poverty and violence, provided little in the way of stability or guidance. His father's paltry earnings as a laborer scarcely sustained the family, while his mother's attempts to nurture Garavito and his six siblings were often eclipsed by the relentless grind of poverty. Consequently, Garavito and his siblings were left to navigate the perilous streets of Genova alone, their innocence tarnished by the harsh realities of their upbringing. The streets of Genova served as a fertile breeding ground for vice and criminality, offering an enticing refuge for impressionable youths such as Garavito. Surrounded by older delinquents and petty criminals, he swiftly descended into a life of petty theft and violence, finding solace in the camaraderie of fellow misfits. However, beneath this veneer of camaraderie lurked a more sinister truth. Garavito's burgeoning fascination with the suffering of others and his insatiable thirst for power and control. As Garavito's criminal exploits intensified, so too did the severity of his transgressions. What initially commenced as minor thefts quickly escalated into acts of wanton cruelty and sadism as he sought to establish dominance over those he perceived as weaker or more vulnerable. His victims, often other impoverished youths, became unwitting pawns in his macabre game of power and control, their lives extinguished on the altar of his insatiable bloodlust. But for Garavito, the thrill of inflicting pain and suffering was insufficient. He coveted the ultimate power, the power of life and death over his victims. Thus, he embarked on a reign of terror that would claim the lives of at least 138 innocent boys, each one serving as a tragic testament to the depths of his depravity. As Colombia grappled with the horror of Garavito's atrocities, the nation confronted the chilling reality of its own inadequacies. For years, 
Garavito had operated with impunity, his crimes concealed amidst the chaos and violence that pervaded Colombian society. Law enforcement agencies, crippled by corruption and incompetence, had failed to recognize the signs of his escalating violence, allowing him to evade capture time and again. However, amid the despair and desolation, moments of heroism and valor emerged. Survivors courageously stepped forward to recount their ordeals, shedding light on the darkness festering within Colombia's streets. Finally, after years of relentless pursuit, Colombian authorities apprehended Garavito on April 22, 1999, bringing an end to his reign of terror and delivering a modicum of justice to his countless victims. Yet even in captivity, Garavito remains an enigma, a chilling reminder of the depths of human depravity and the fragility of human life. His crimes serve as a sobering cautionary tale, underscoring the omnipresent threat posed by malevolence lurking in what the most unsolved? unsuspecting of locales. As Colombia continues to convalesce from the scars inflicted by Garavito's rampage, may we never forget the lessons gleaned from one of history's most reviled monsters.